Okay, um, so I'm going to call our meeting to order. Today is April 27th, 2021, and this is a business meeting of the North Kingstown School Committee. If I could ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And um, let me just make sure I unmute the appropriate people here. One moment. All right. And uh, if we could have one of the clerks call the roll, please. Ms. Braganza, are you available to do that? If not, I can. You can take care of that also. Sure. All right. Uh, Mrs. King, I'll have you do that if you could. Mr. Blasbaugh? Here. Mr. Mather? Here. Ms. Lima? Here. Ms. Hoskins? Here. Ms. Hildebrand? Here. Ms. Thanks. Stott? I see Sally. Yep, and you know what, I didn't unmute them yet, sorry, that's me. And do I see our student representatives? I see Mr. Cedar. Yep. Uh, Owen. And Owen, here we go. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here Perfect. Too. Thank you. Okay. And um, I can do the calendar. Um, so on the calendar, uh, we just have two items which would be um, Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. We have a scheduled school committee business meeting. Uh, and I'm happy to announce that we are making plans. And as long as we don't have any issues or unforeseen circumstances, uh, we're gonna be returning to an in-person meeting um, for that meeting. Um, and the plan is to hold that meeting in the high school auditorium to allow ample opportunity for the appropriate social distancing that we still need but we are moving forward. So I'm very pleased to be able to announce uh, that unless something goes wrong, that is the plan. Um, and then the next item would be a um, school committee business meeting on May 25th, 2021, um, which would also follow the same procedure at that point. So um, next um, we have presentations and recognitions. Dr. G, do you have anything? Or Dr. Mansuri? Dr. Mansuri, I'll let you go first. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have two recognitions tonight. Um, the first one is on behalf of Art Sonia, Danielle Singh, our teacher at both Davisville Academy and Quinnessa Elementary School, has been presented Art Sonia's annual Art Education Leadership Award trophy for her demonstration of outstanding leadership and innovation in our educational community. This award honors 15 leaders in the art education community out of thousands who continually inspired their peers through their online school gallery on Oxonia. She was interviewed, and you can read about her in the patch or in the what's up um, Also, I want to know Danielle is in her 15th year here in North, uh, not in the South teaching, and I'm happy to say we've had her for the last 13 years. So thank you very much, Danielle. That is an honor. Mm -hmm. And the second one goes, uh, right now uh, to Kristen Gielen, who normally teaches at Clinesi Elementary School, and this year she's a fourth grade distance learning teacher. She was chosen along with 14 other T plus national policy leaders to help facilitate the Phoenix Project. And this project is focused on redesigning education, teaching and learning for equity beyond the pandemic. Um, John B. King, the former Secretary of Education, is a collaborative partner in this project. And I would like to personally congratulate Kristen. She is behind the scenes all the time. She's working on so many different projects. And if I didn't cajole her to be able to do this, nobody would have heard about it. So thank you for your work. And that's all I have, Dr. Rubin. Thank you. I'd like to um, add that um, in many of the recent years, um, U.S. News and World Report puts out, you know, um, they used to have uh, silver and gold medal schools and that sort of thing. And North Kingstown's always done very well with that. We've been recognized a bunch of times. This year, again, we are recognized. 
as ranking number five in the state of Rhode Island, um, which is a really nice group to be in. And uh, that has a lot to do with, you know, AP performance, uh, test scores, you know, that sort of thing. And so a uh, real nice award there. And I know we have some, some other good things coming up that I can't wait to announce. But um, so congratulations to the high school. Congratulations to, you know, all the schools along the way that get them to the high school and, and, and make that, that great performance and, and keep, uh, you know, a really strong reputation for our high school. Uh, that's what we have for tonight for recognitions. And there are no presentations. Thank you. And anything for a superintendent's report? Uh, do you want to do citizens' comments first? I do. Sorry. It's right at the top of my agenda, yeah. and I, I, I dropped by it looking. Sorry. So, yes, okay. absolutely. Um, so, we will call for citizens' comments. And um, so just a reminder, I think most people know by now, but just in case we have new folks, uh, if you'd like to comment, you could use the um, raise hand um, option in the participants tab on your Zoom. Um, and the first person I see is Kate Scott. Hi, everybody. Kate Scott, 10 Jasmine Circle in Saunderstown. I just wanted to jump on the accolades for Mrs. Beeland and Mrs. Singh because my son Weston is in Mrs. Beeland's class and I cannot say enough amazing things about her as a teacher. She is phenomenal. You know, we do not live in the Quinnesset district. Had I known she was an option, I may have moved or stayed in that district um, because she is amazing. She has brought my soon to be 10 year old son into a different level of reading, writing, and education that I did not know he had within him, especially during distance learning. So I am so happy to hear that she's being awarded because she is amazing, as is Mrs. Singh. She goes above and beyond constantly for both of my children. Both of my boys love art, and she would meet with them one-on-one -on -one whenever she could fit it into her schedule. She is phenomenal, and I just can't say it enough about either of them. They are just wonderful, wonderful teachers. And I emailed Dr. Mansieri, but I wanted to verbalize my thank you email that I sent to her because she sat in on one of Mrs. Beeland's classes um, for their fourth grade virtual science fair, gosh, two weeks ago now, and made sure to tell those kids that despite what they hear on the news, that distance learning kids are failing, that they're gonna be kept behind Dr. Mansari went out of her way to tell those kids that the opposite is true, that they are exceeding all of the expectations. And we tell him that constantly. And his star testing is no less than a 98% and it better not be. So he sees it on test scores. Of course, we don't find out about how he does personally on ride has. But for her to, to say that to him and for him to hear it from somebody other than his parents was huge because she's a big wig. And when he heard that from her that day, he just, it just did it for him. So I emailed her to say thank you, but I feel like you all should know that Dr. Mansieri went out of her way to do that. And again, I thank you for that. And Mrs. Beeland was the teacher who happens to be on this call. And thank you, Mrs. Beeland, for everything. And of course, Mrs. Singh. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you. Anyone else um, like to add any citizens' comments? Uh, next, I have Kim Lanley. Are you there? Sorry, sorry, Greg. I was kind of, I don't know why my mic is. You're good now. Uh, it's on again, it's off again. So, hey, so I am. Um, it's always a little bit harder to comment on things that are on the agenda that before they talk, you guys talk about them. But I have a couple of questions, which I know you're not going to answer, but just to throw out there and thoughts about the DEI committee. Um, so I did apply to be on, I didn't get selected. So I, I would be interested in knowing what that process was. But beyond that, um, a couple of questions and thoughts. Um, I know that Ms. Lima, has a sort of a Facebook group called Toward an Anti-Racist North Kingstown. So I was wondering if the DEI committee is related to um, that 
a group that she has or in any way an extension of that group. Um, that group just recently, in the last week or so, posted a survey on Facebook that I found very troubling. It, it sort of reminded me of uh, when my son was in 10th grade at the high school, my older son, he was given a white privilege survey by his English teacher, which was very upsetting to me. Um, her survey reminded me of that. So I'm just gonna ask you. I, I'm gonna interrupt. I think this goes beyond what citizens' comments could be. Um, yeah. We are yeah. questioning a school committee member's Facebook page. I think it goes beyond what the practice of citizens' I, comments. I, I, I disagree because that same school committee member is now starting a subcommittee that seems to be linked to that Facebook page. So I disagree. And I think that my comments, I don't, I don't, I didn't notice a limit on my comments. So, so let me, let me pull this back here for a second. So first of all, I'm going to say, um, thank you, Ms. Carroll. Um, I'm going to allow her to continue to speak. She's entitled to her opinion here. Um, so I'll, I'll let you carry on uh, you need, and we'll address anything that we want to address when we get to that agenda item. So, okay, perfect. I, I do still, as always, I ask if you could, I, sorry, I forgot to ask you to state your name and address. I, I know the name, but, um, and I forgot to mention the, you know, I do keep track of how long you've been speaking. We asked that yes. you, um, three minutes, and I stopped the clock at that moment, so you, you're about one minute and 50 seconds in. So, um, okay. I'll let you on. The one thing okay. I would ask, the one thing that we do caution is, you know, we would not allow, you know, something that's offensive or a direct attack on someone. That's not appropriate. Um, so, I, I just want to make sure you understand that. So, right. oh, I wasn't. I I wasn't meaning to directly attack. I was. I'm. I'm questioning whether or not there's a link between the two. We have something going on outside of school that seems directly related to a new a new subcommittee being formed. So that's my question comment. Um, I'm also just in general interested in understanding the number of incidents that the school has documented. Um, of, of, of racism, how many incidents do we have documented? I feel that um, we may be um, solving a problem that doesn't exist. Um, and so I'm concerned about that. We have very limited resources in the school. And um, I mean, I myself just went and looked at like test scores and stuff to look at disparities. Um, and, you know, I didn't actually see any because we, we do have so few, you know, students that would fall into the the categories that this DEI committee is looking at, that it, it wasn't even a, it didn't even show any disparity because it wasn't even a category. So I, I just feel like we have really limited resources in our school. There's lots of problems in the school. I don't think racism is one of them. And um, I, so that's my comment. I, I feel like we're searching in search of a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to speak? Um, I see uh, next is Jacob Cedar. Um, I just wanted to congratulate uh, Mrs. Bielan on the award. Um, I remember I had both Mrs. Bielan and Mrs. Singh when I was at the elementary school too long ago at this point. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to congratulate them on that. It's well deserved. Um, and I also wanted to say quickly that um, I don't really know how to word this, but um, I, I guess that would be a horrible precedent to set for someone to cut off a citizen during citizens' comments. Um, really, unless they're saying something really offensive or anything. Um, I think that's just a blatant, it's just blatant oppression on someone's rights. So I think action needs to be taken into what just happened there. Um, and if not, then someone else needs to do something about that. But that was extremely disrespectful and really just not okay on any level. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have um, Kristen Belland or Belland. Hi, sorry. I actually I am speechless and came on for an entirely different reason tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have my camera on. Um, 
I just wanted to come on number one because I was so excited to hear that Danielle won this award. Uh, I've been working with Danielle Singh for multiple years now. We're going on almost 20 years together. I think I was hired two years before her and she is outstanding. And I think the thing that resonates most is she's really dedicated to arts integration and arts therapy for students and seeing that as a way to reach out and bring SEL into the classroom. And I, I think that's something worth looking at. Um, so I came to speak on behalf of Danielle and the other person was Dr. Mansiri to be honest because uh, she received a phone call of mine today and I thanked her because, you know, being a DL teacher this year was really interesting. I've been at Quidnesset forever. It's my home. I love my school. And I was very nervous about taking the DL position. It has been very eye-opening to be it with five of the six elementary schools. I have everyone but Forest Park. Um, I, I, have DA as well. I have DA as well. And the community in my class is absolutely phenomenal. The fact that they have never actually met each other in person blows my mind every single day because they talk with each other like they certainly do. But working for the five elementary schools, you know, you have so many administrators, even though we're supposed to report out to Fishing Cove, and Dr. Mansiri has been there as like my chief administrator all year. And I think the only reason why I was half as, success, as successful at this was because anytime I had a question, um, she was there. And I've never reached out to hire admin as much as I have this year. <laughs> and I'm very grateful. So thank you, Dr. Mansiri. Well, and thank you very much and congratulations again. Um, anyone else who'd like to speak? Okay, then hearing none, um, we'll move on with our agenda. Uh, next item now, Dr. Jay, Superintendent's Report. Sure, thank you. I, I'll be brief tonight. Um, you know, last week, uh, Governor McKean came onto his press conference and announced some loosening of restrictions for COVID. And uh, that is some good news. And um, I was told today that even the, um, the good news that we already had about the prom and the graduation, those, those um, guidelines will be updated as well to reflect some of those points. So we don't know exactly what those details are yet, but, um, but it's all very good news. Another piece of good news is that um, Governor McKee has also um, you know, made put together a program um, in which the North Kingstown Fire Department will conduct another one of its clinics, this time for uh, students ages 16 to 18. Um, and we have that in mind, um, if all goes the right way, for next Friday to get started with that. So, um, you know, vaccinations are happening. I encourage people to, to get that done. It's super helpful. Um, this clinic will also be available to any teachers who haven't um, yet gotten vaccinated. I think most of our teachers have been, but you know, if there are some that still need a second shot or something along those lines, this clinic will be available to you for that. And uh, there, you know, the governor is trying to make it super convenient. So this will be um, next Friday, uh, right after school for a few hours and students will um, get some information about that in the next uh, few weeks, uh, excuse me, in the next few days about, you know, how to make an appointment and um, the, the two sessions that we had for the teachers went incredibly smooth and uh, as I mentioned before, really proud of the fire department for their support, um, Chief Linacree in particular, um, who's done a number of these sessions and, uh, and so many volunteers and our school nurses uh, who will be on hand again to administer um, the shots. So it's excellent news. We're taking steps in the right direction and I'm, I'm really encouraged. So that's all I have for you tonight. Thank you very much. So um, moving on to routine items. Um, I need a motion to seal the executive session minutes of this evening, April 27, 2021. So moved. A motion for Ms. Hildebrand. Second. Second, Mr. Mather. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. And I can disclose that no votes were taken in this evening's executive session. Um, for the consent agenda, I'm going to exempt Item four, sorry, uh, item C5, because we're going to remove that from the agenda this evening with unanimous consent, unless anyone objects. 
I will revisit that after some more information comes in. I don't hear any objections. So, by, anyone else have any items they'd like to exempt from the consent agenda? And hearing none, if I could get a motion to approve everything except item C5. Motion from Ms. Hildebrand. Do I have a second? Second from Ms. Lima. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda passes unanimously. Uh, next, moving on to unfinished business. Um, 2021 school budget. Mrs. King, anything? Okay, and 2021-22 school budget. A little bit happened last night that we could probably report back on. Right, so last night, uh, the North Kingstown Town Council took a vote three to two to fund the school department. Um, we ended up with approximately 3.65% over the prior year, over this year actually. Um, and the, the difference is actually not that uh, so much that the whole request was not granted, but um, when I do, when I budget state aid number, we're always budgeting that very early. And the number of that ride posts is based on October census. So I usually do adjust that down a little bit because, you know, we're going to have changes in enrollment. So um, what they budgeted uh, last night, what was approved last night is um, it's pretty close to the number that Ride has out there right now. It's not the exact number that Ride has posted out there. It's a little bit lower. Um, but then what uh, the town would do is they would have a higher state aid number and a lower uh, property tax number. Um, so anyway, as it stands, we do need to make some adjustments um, to correct those numbers, but we'd like to wait a little bit longer to see if the General Assembly uh, votes on the state aid number so that hopefully we can count on that number. If not, we will have to make cuts um, because our town number is about $186,000 less um, than the 4%. But I would like to personally thank the three people uh, who voted to support the school department last night, and that would be uh, Town Council President Greg Mancini, uh, Council Person uh, Dr. Kim Page, and Council Person Katie Anderson. Uh, they were very respectful, uh, very supportive, uh, and I appreciated their time very much. So we'll come back to you with uh, any of those changes or whatever we need to do uh, before we wrap up this session when we see what the General Assembly does. Thank you very much. And uh, echoing what Mrs. King just said, I, I want to thank the um, Town Council for the careful consideration that they give to the Town Budget every year, uh, and ours as well, being you know the majority of that. And uh, I also want to personally thank President Manzini, Councilor Page, and Councilor Anderson for their support. And while I was a little disappointed that we didn't have the support of all the town councilors, I, I understand that they are doing what they think is right, and, and I want to thank them for all the hard work they put into the budget as well. Um, so uh, that takes care of that for now, though we'll revisit and finalize the budget, as Mrs. King explained, um, once we have some final numbers. Because remember, you know, as I always point out, a budget is a budget. Um, you know, it's based on assumptions, and as those assumptions change, sometimes adjustments need to be made. Um, then CIP existing bond, future bond. Um, Mrs. King, I'll uh, let you speak on the proposal in front of us. Uh, yes, okay, so this item we have uh, discussed, uh, it was a, a little while back in January, um, I was you know, discussing with everybody, we were putting forward an RFP for an educational facility master plan uh, planner. As of June 30th, 2018, RIDE requires that these plans be submitted along with the five-year asset protection plan that we always have to submit. Um, our asset protection plan was approved in May of 2018, so we just missed this requirement. So we are just a couple of years into our uh, approved plan with RIDE. But the reason why we want to try to get this master plan done now before we embark upon a revised five-year plan is because RIDE has awarded us uh, what they call a technical assistance grant for $150,000 in order to get this work done. That was originally supposed to expire uh, December 2020, but with COVID they extended it for another year for us. So now that's going to expire at the end of this year. We, don't, we obviously don't want to lose those funds because you can see the, the prices um, on these. So what my plan would be is for us to move forward with getting this facility master plan done. 
which can take several months to complete. Uh, the requirement in the plan is that it's completed by December 1st, um, and it will take quite a bit of that time. You know, we have the break with summer and everything too, because there are a lot of constituents involved. Uh, the school committee is going to be involved. The principals are going to be heavily involved. Dr. Mansiri, Dr. Roger, um, there's, there's a, and citizens. There's a lot to doing one of these plans. So I um, issued an RFP, and I was uh, rather surprised at the number of responses we received. We received nine, nine responses. As you can see, it's a voluminous amount of data that we received. Um, so I, I decided what I would do is I would seek out the services of um, someone that does what they call bid leveling. And uh, the organization that we use for our owners project management work, so it's, it is outside of this master planning, um, they offer these services. And I, I was able to connect with somebody there. Um, and basically what they do is they really take all of the proposals you, you receive and they scrub them in comparison to the RFP that you issued. And in each one of your categories, uh, commentary is given on how well that proposal addresses the need of your RFP. So as you can see, that information that we have from the agency is called STV DPM. They don't recommend, uh, they're not here to recommend someone for us. They're just here to show the facts and the details of the RFPs uh, that were submitted based on all of the, all of the uh, work that they do. So um, based on all of that information, uh, we do have a, a very low bid um, that I was concerned about. And as you can see, um, although we did use that low number as the threshold for the points, um, we do believe that there's some, some parts that are missing to that number. We believe the alternatives uh, to you know, the master plan as well as the final report are not included in that number. So. Um, and the, uh, the actual um, proposal itself was lacking. Um, there are a couple other in the middle that we also thought were lacking. Um, so we've narrowed it down, I narrowed down, uh, to, um, with input from uh, other staff, um, to an organization, Kilia Kentor. Um, Kilia has performed several of these master plans. I reached out to all of the references uh, that she provided, uh, and they gave her absolutely glowing references. So Kelia's response was not the lowest bid. It was certainly not the highest bid. Um, but from the information that I was able to get, and I reviewed, I reviewed the proposals myself, so I don't want you to think that I didn't review them either, but I did. Um, the information that was provided it looks like Helia will it has best responded to the needs of our RFP uh, in this process. So I also did speak to Ride uh, another bonus with uh, Helia Kentor, which um, was not part of the decision making. But another bonus is that uh, Helia's company is on the state MPA, and in order to have gotten on that state MPA, there there's quite a handful of organizations that are on that MPA for these master plans. And we did reach out to all of them when this, we, you know, we posted the RFP in the paper and a couple of other places, and we also reached out to everyone on that RFP. Kelia Kento was on the RFP. She, had, she also, as you know, she responded. So what that means, though, is that means that Ride has also gone through their RFP process with the state MPA, and she's been vetted through them as well. The last thing that I did was I did speak to a contact of mine at Ride to make sure that we were not expected to take the low bid because obviously Ride is paying for this. We have $150,000 of a technical assistance grant. And I was told that we absolutely do not need to take the lowest bidder. Um, they want us to determine the one who's most responsive that can best fit our needs. And they just want to make sure that they know that we had a process. And clearly we did. We had an RFP that was very similar to Ride's RFP. We went through the bid leveling. And we have all of the documentation on what each proposal provided in response to our RFP. And I'm asking tonight that you make a decision that we award this to Kelly Kentor. Um, it certainly is not going to be the last time that you're going to hear her name uh, because she is going to be working with the school committee. She'll be at public meetings um, to complete this process. And basically, in working with the ed our educational staff, she is going to get us to 
where what we need to do and changes that we need to make in order to make our buildings uh, 21st century buildings. So as I had, have explained before, what we normally do is we take our buildings because that's what we have and we fit everything we need into those buildings. Kilia and the uh, requirement of this educational facility master plan that RIDE wants us to have is kind of the opposite. They want us to, to change our buildings to fit around our educational programming vision, which is probably not going to be easy, but that is exactly what the outcome of this master plan is supposed to be. So um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. It really was a very extensive process, but it's a very important process. This is a really uh, important report for the district. It's a report that's going to guide us through our next uh, five-year plan. And, uh, you know, it could help us with some of our capital needs so that we can really have a, an expert and we can have a, a lengthy process that we need to go through that shows what we need in our buildings so that our schools can be improved for our students. Um, but I would ask tonight that you approve Kilia Kentor as the awardee of this RFP. Thank you. Dr. Jane. And Mr. Blasco, thank you. I, I want to I thank Mrs. King for all the work that she's done just to get us this far. You know, we, we've been trying to keep our eye on a long-term plan to uh, revitalize our schools. Uh, last night, uh, the you know, Whitford Middle School being 85 years old was a prime example of, you know, uh, our, our buildings need attention and, uh, and we need to be having a vision for uh, restoring them and making them modern and uh, usable for the long term. And uh, none of this is easy. She just described a plan that is going to be at least a year long with multiple meetings and multiple schools, uh, you know, uh, involving multiple stakeholders. And none of that is easy. But if we keep our eyes on the prize and, um, you know, the, the work will lead to, uh, you know, an infrastructure in our district that is good for the long term and for our kids and probably for their kids as well. So um, thank you, Mrs. King, for all your hard work. Thank you. Um, so any school committee members have any questions? And if not, I ask for a motion to approve item C1, awarding the bid as recommended to Keely Kenter. So moved. Motion from Ms. Hoskin. Second from Mr. Mather. Any further discussion? I actually do have a clarification question. Um, maybe I misheard Mrs. King, but did you say that the report is due December 1st of 2021? Yes, the requirement because the funding from RIDE expires December 31st. Okay, so we actually have less, a lot less than a year. <laughs> we do, and, and actually they, they say that it probably takes six to eight months uh, to complete it. So my, I, and, you know, I have not had a conversation with Kilia, but what I believe we'll do is, you know, Dr. Mansiri, uh, Dr. Jay and I will group with her. We would really like to obviously get started uh, working with the principals if we can have a couple of meetings before we break. Okay, uh, that was my next question. Um, yeah, we'll come back in September and uh, we'll really hit the ground running. That's when there'll be some citizens meetings and, and, and whatnot. Um, but at least Kilia will have the vehicle lay the groundwork and get started on that uh, in, during, you know, our kind of brief break in July. Thank you. And this uh, this is, was an amazingly comprehensive process. I was very so surprised to see we had nine proposals. And yeah. you can see that I had stacks of paper. Uh, and, you know, I, I hope you don't mind, but I think that our system is a really good system for us to keep track of exactly what was submitted and what you're voting on and you know if there are any requests for APRA information we can just send them right to that so it's always a good place to keep that stuff but I was surprised we had so many proposals that's great you know we have times where we don't we only get one or two for some things you know and that's always concerning so it was great to see so many. I'd like to um, echo Dr. OJ and Lisa's Thank you, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> this was a very daunting, nearly thousand page executive agenda. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, a tremendous amount of work on your Mr. Part. Mather, you didn't call me at five o'clock today. I didn't. I actually started reading it a lot earlier. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you have to book, book a half a day just to get through it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, and so uh, and just to mention, um, the entire packet in, in the, if you're on our um, agenda pages for the school department, um, the public agenda has the complete um, bid submissions and everything that goes along with it. Um, so there's, there's nothing uh, behind the scenes on that. You're welcome to, to browse through the, uh, I'm trying to get to the end, but my computer sort of chokes on it. Um, it is nearly a thousand pages long this week. <laughs> so uh, it's great that we had such a, uh, a great response. Um, so we did have a motion in a second. If there aren't any other questions, um, I'll ask for a vote. So all those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? passes unanimously. Um, next item for approval are the um, approval of the DEI subcommittee members. Um, I just want to mention that um, you know we approved the charge of this committee a little while back. Um, it is a completely volunteer committee um, made up of um, you know school committee member, um, members of the public um, selected by the superintendent pursuant to the charge that we gave. So that's uh, where the names that are before you all came from. Um, so that was the process. I know there was a, a question about that. Uh, Dr. Jell, let you speak in a moment. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I for one, um, you know, fully support the, the work this subcommittee is going to do. And I just want to remind people, it's this is simply an advisory committee. Um, it doesn't have the power to do anything, um, not directly. Um, the point is that um, we wanted to have a group take a look at, um, you know, the potential of racism uh, throughout the school district. And uh, I, I'll be really frank, and this is about as frank as I ever get. Um, as a, a, a white male, I don't think I can look at that. I just don't. I don't think that I'm qualified to look at that question. Um, not in the world that I live in. Um, and not everyone lives in the same world that we do. And that's why I think that it's important that people from diverse backgrounds and uh, different perspectives are able to take a look at things because we aren't always able to see the world the way everyone else sees it. So um, that's my two cents on this. Um, Dr. O'Shea, you wanted to speak as well? Yeah, uh, I'm uh, really proud of the work that we've uh, been able to do so far to get to this point. Um, just to uh, address some of, uh, you know, if, if people are still wondering what this is about, um, it, it was from our March 23rd meeting where this was approved. And, um, you know, I'm just going to read a quick uh, point or two from this. The, the school department believes that all students and staff deserve a respectful and inclusive environment. The uh, diversity, equity, and inclusivity policy um, supports the expectations and, sh and strategies outlined in the DEI implementation plan designed to reinforce how race, ethnicity, language, disability, religion, age, sex, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, country of ancestral origin, um, you know, military status, interrupted education status, all of these different categories play in. So it it's, it's reaches much further than, you know, racism. Um, but these are issues that we need to do more talking about. You know, um, we want all of the students in our um, district to feel they belong, to feel that their needs are being addressed, um, whether they're educational needs, social needs, emotional needs, um, it's very important and it's very easy um, to have blind spots. So, you know, it's, it's all the more important that we put together a group of people um, who, um, you know, have a background. We, we, we wanted some diversity in terms of the populations of the district, meaning uh, there's a student on the committee, there are uh, adults from the community, parents, um, people who work in the district, um, right to Dr. Mansiri and Ms. Lima representing the school committee and the central office. So, you know, this is important work and, and we need their advice. Um, we need them to, to look at what we're doing in all facets of our work and to see if, if there are areas that we need to address. And I don't know if uh, Dr. Mansiri and Ms. Lima would like to add to any of that, but I'm really happy with the work that they've done in, in selecting the committee and very thankful that we had so many people who were interested in being part of this. So there's definitely an interest in this community uh, for this kind of work, and that's much appreciated. Thank you, Dr. Ajay. I, you know, I don't think I could do it any more justice than you just did. I really appreciate you just jumping in, and, and that exact paragraph is going to be the one I was going to read. I will Sorry about just that. have <laughs> just to assure the community 
uh, Dr. Jay and uh, Jen Lima and myself, we met a few times prior to sending out the, the Google Doc. Uh, the Google Doc opened up by one day on 324, and it closed down on 4-7, giving everybody ample time to, we were, and we were overwhelmed and really surprised and very thankful um, by the number of people that we uh, had. And then our, we were able to work with our new director of HR, and Jen and myself sat down. We created a matrix, and we like rubric, and being an educator, that's what we made sure we did that. And then we went and line by line, we spent the better part of the entire morning together to make sure that we had done our due diligence. And we all um, agreed that we had the representation that we needed. And then um, even further, I don't think Bonnie and Bonnie had a problem, but he did a um, kind of a statistics on how many people, um, you know, what what percentage came from Nigeria, and it was all done well, and it, everything. So I have no qualms about the people that were chosen or who wasn't, you know, we would love to have everybody, but then it would be just too much. Um, so we're gonna be uh, getting together and coming up with a date and sending that out. And then to begin work, I'm very happy to do it, and I'm really excited to work alongside John and Brian and the people on the committee to um, give goals. And part of the directive was to make sure that we look at the strategic plan and we look at the current goals of the school committee right now, and that we um, use both of those to guide the DEI um, committee and what they recommended. So I'm ready. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Lima, you're muted if you wanted to speak, sorry. Yep, sorry. Uh, like Dr. Manziri said, I was overwhelmed with the number of responses that we got. Like, it was amazing uh, to go through, and it was really difficult to um, winnow it down. Um, but also, it was kind of, um, on the flip side of that, so many people wanted to get involved with this committee because so many people saw the need to be involved in the work that this committee was created for. Um, and I, I just want to say a couple things. You know, test scores are a great indicator of things, but they are not the only indicator of 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 a problem. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter how many people are affected by something. If people are affected, that means that there is a reason that things need to be looked at. Um, you know, there, North Kingstown is a great town, North Kingstown is a great school community, but there are issues that need to be addressed. Um, and I just would like people to consider that, you know, the mere mention of the word racism or anti-racism, that it can incite so much anger and unrest in people, that's something that needs to be considered as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to the work um, that this committee is going to be doing and um, looking forward to getting started. So, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Blanchfold. I just um, want the community to know that, you know, of course, North Kingstown is not alone in this. Uh, just today, Dr. Mansiri and I joined in with a group that we um, we learned about through reading a national publication of um, a group of Connecticut superintendents who are doing this work together, in, you know, because they're forming EEI committees in their districts and they, they want a better handle on you know, uh, their leadership in, in response to this kind of work. And so we, we contact those folks, um, and there is a, a group of eight different districts, all of our neighbors and us in South County, Rhode Island, who our superintendents and assistant superintendents will be working together in this next school year um, to do a lot of reading, to do a lot of reflecting, and to, you know, kind of hone our own leadership uh, for, you know, responsiveness to this kind of work. So. Uh, it's, it's really a national initiative right now. Thank you. And I just want to make the point, um, just on the subcommittee in general, as I mentioned, it's an advisory subcommittee. doesn't have the power to do anything but make recommendations to the school committee, so we'll take a look at any reports uh, that the subcommittee does. Um, and if there are individuals who wanted to participate and you know they weren't selected, um, it is a um, subcommittee of the school committee, so it, all the meetings that will be held uh, are public meetings. They have to be open to the public, um, and the agendas will be posted um, along with you know, meeting times and locations and everything, so um, they're, you know, by no means working in secret in any way. There will be a full open uh, subcommittee that anyone can uh, participate with. So, um, need to get a motion to approve the uh, list of subcommittee members that were proposed by the superintendent administration. So moved. 
Uh, motion for Ms. Hildebrand. A second. Second from Ms. Hoskins. Any further discussion? I just want to say thank you to the three of you and also to Mr. Lally. I think the description of your process was really great. It was, um, it sounds like you were very intentional about the decisions that you made and were very thoughtful. And I appreciate that. And um, thank you. I'm encouraged by this work. I'm really excited to hear more about it um, as you begin to meet. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? We have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing and seeing none, that passes unanimously. Uh, next, we need to approve the 21-22 school committee calendar. Can I get a motion to approve item 5 to 7 one um, A motion from Mr. Mather. Do I have a second? Second from Ms. Lima. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. That passes unanimously. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, next, um, we have the approval of building subcommittee new members. Um, if I, we'll start with a motion to approve, and then we'll talk briefly. If I could get a motion to approve, item 8-1. So moved. Motion from Ms. Hoskins. Second. Second, Ms. Hildebrand. Mrs. King, do you want to speak briefly to this? Right. Uh, so over the last few years, we have had uh, the loss of some members uh, for our building facility subcommittee. Um, sadly, two of the members passed away, uh, Mr. Cliff Seabury uh, several years ago and Mr. Riley Mellor. Um, but um, we had not replaced them at the time. Uh, we still had our other members that were involved. Uh, but recently, we heard that we have another member who's going to be moving out of state, and that's Mr. John Biscarden. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever worked with John before. I know Mr. Uh, Blasbog has, and we know John. John is a very good contributing member uh, to the building committee, but um, it, it's past time for us to uh, try to get a couple of new members. So I posted in our local paper, um, and we have two members, one member that actually came from that advertisement and one member that came from, uh, was forwarded to us from Dr. Kim Page of the town council. So we have uh, Mr. Jack Pine, who I know many of you know uh, is a citizen. Uh, he participates in a lot of committees. Uh, he also ran for town council in this recent uh, election. Uh, so we're really excited to have Mr. Pine join the group. He's very positive, he's very supportive. Uh, we're really looking forward to having him working with us on the building committee. And um, our, the other member, a new member that came to us from uh, Ms. Page is uh, Ms. Lisa Bowie. So I asked her if she was related to our Office of Family Learning, Cindy Bow, and she said, well, we are very close friends, but you say my name differently than what you say hers. This is Bowie. She said, like, uh, the singer. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, uh, Ms. Bowie is a, uh, a PE, that she's a civil engineer, uh, and that's going to be a really good addition to our building committee as well. So our next meeting uh, will be June 2nd, and uh, we're looking to get approval for these two new members of that committee. Great. Thank you very much. And I want to uh, personally thank Mr. Bruscarden. For those of you who don't know, uh, Mr. Bruscarden also served as a member of the school committee a um, uh, number of years back and has been very supportive of uh, the school department and the schools in general. And just a reminder that, you know, all the people on this subcommittee um, bring their professional expertise to have, you know, a professional engineer volunteering their time. Um, they're not getting paid for this. <laughs> they are volunteering their time and their extraordinary expertise in areas ranging from HVAC to engineering to you know whatever they bring to the table to look at our proposals that deal with our buildings and our facilities and make recommendations and the you know number of times that at these subcommittees one of the experts is able to say to you know the consultant involved hey you know did you look at this you know we may be paying people to do this but sometimes somebody comes up with an idea that works and this is exactly what that committee does and the, the cumulative years of experience of these people it, it, it's amazing and i want to thank each and every one of them and especially mr bus garden you know for the time that he put in dr jay yeah i just want to uh, welcome i know uh, new members and, and mr pine in particular i, I know uh, mr pine pretty well 
He's such a, a great advocate for the school department and uh, particularly North Kingstown sports. He just uh, lives and breathes NK uh, sports and, and just a, a real friend to the school department. I appreciate his involvement. And I also want to uh, take this opportunity to thank John Biscardin for all his work for the district as a member of the school committee, but then staying on with this facilities committee. He's a really good guy, uh, grown to be a good friend, and uh, definitely appreciate his, uh, what he's been able to give to the school department over the years. So, um, Lisa, I always make you check. We had a motion and a second, correct? Did anyone check? <laughs> yes, good, thank you. Oh, thank you, because I had to go. <laughs> okay, sorry, good. So we have a motion and a second. Thank you, Ms. Attorney Carroll. Um, so, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. I want to welcome our new members onto the uh, committee, uh, subcommittee. Um, for new business, uh, we don't really have anything. Under reports, we have a disposal notification in our financial reports. Anyone have any questions on those? If not, we've reached the end of our agenda, and I would ask for a motion to adjourn. A motion from Ms. Hildebrand, a second from Ms. Lima. Any discuss or no discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Passes unanimously. We are adjourned. Thank you all for coming this evening. Ooh.